Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about the zeros of a function and how to find the zeros of a polynomial. Well, it'd be good to start out with knowing, well, what is a zero? Well, it's rather simple, actually. A zero of a polynomial function are the spots in which a graph crosses the x-axis. In other words, the zeros are the same as the x-intercepts. Okay, that's really important to remember. And remember that from the first video for this uh, section, remember we talked about the x-intercepts are found when y is 0 and x is some number. Now, in working with a polynomial of degree 1, or in the form a times x plus b, the zeros can be found by taking the opposite of b divided by a, which we'll talk about in a, in a second here. If we're working with a polynomial of degree 2, so if we're working with a quadratic in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, then we can use a quadratic formula. However, for polynomials greater than degree 2, there's no easy formulas. In which case, the best way to find the zeros would be to just to graph the function. So we'll look at how to do that at the end of this video. But let's, let's first start by looking at this equation, y equals 2x plus 3. Again, we're asked to find the zeros. And just as I've already mentioned, the zeros are the same as the x-intercept, which is where y is equal to 0. So if I replace y with 0 in this equation, I get 0 equals 2x plus 3. And essentially, I'm trying to figure out what value for x would give me 0 here. Now, I could go through the process of subtracting 3 and dividing by 2 to get x equals negative 3 halves. Or we could take and use this little trick here, the opposite of b over a, when we're working with the degree 1 to find the 0. We just take the opposite of b over a. b, in this case, would be the 3. a is the 2. The opposite of b, then, would be the opposite of a positive 3 is a negative 3 divided by a is 2. Sure enough, that gives you a negative 3 halves. So it's a little shortcut to get to the same answer, but that shortcut only works when the degree for the uh, polynomial is 1. Well, what happens if it's a degree 2? Well, in this case, just like we said, we have to use the quadratic formula. Now, there is actually a typo in this. This should just be 1x squared, so let's just remove that 2. So the equation should be y equals x squared minus 12x plus 20. Now, if you recall from the quadratic formula, the quadratic formula starts by taking the opposite of b. b, in this case, is a negative 12. So the opposite of b would be a positive 12, in this case, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now, I like to go ahead and just square whatever our b is, because then it um, eliminates, hopefully, the chance of getting some, making some errors here, because we want to make sure that we square both the 12 and the negative. So the b the negative 12, when I square that, is going to be a positive 144. Now, it's going to be minus 4 times a. a is 1, because remember there's a typo here, so make sure that you caught that. Um, so a is 1. c is a positive 20. And it's this whole thing, everything that we've done, not just what's under the radical, but everything is divided by 2 times a. 2 times 1 would just give us 2. Let's simplify what's under the radical there. Here we have negative 4 times 1, which would be negative 4. Negative 4 times 20 is negative 80. 144 minus 80 is a 64, which is the same as 12 plus or minus 8 divided by 2. So what we end up getting here is we get that x equals 12 plus 8 is 20. Divided by 2 gives me 10. 12 minus 8 is 4. Divide that by 2, and we get 2. So we get uh, two x-intercepts here when x is 2 and when x is uh, 10. So that would be our answer there. Now if they ask us to write it as a coordinate, you want to make sure that you don't make the mistake of writing it as 10 comma 2. As a coordinate, the same answer would be when x is 10, y is 0, and when x is 2, y is 0. Okay, so you want to make sure you understand that. Okay, let's look at this last one here. This one here is a, a cubic function where we have 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now, we're going to have to graph this to be able to find our zeros here. So let's go ahead and get out our calculators. And let's go to a graph. And we're going to type in the equation. The equation, again, is 2x cubed. Now, remember to access the exponent. We have a square, but we don't have a cube button. So what we have to do is we have to go to this, uh, we have to go to this caret button. And we're going to type in a 3. Now, after that, anything I type in would be an exponent. Okay, if I were to continue typing, it would still be an exponent. I don't want that. So what you can do is you can hit the right arrow to move the cursor back to the bottom, back to our base. And now we're going to type in the rest of the equation. So plus 6x squared minus 4x 
minus 12. And hit enter. And we can see that there are three x-intercepts here. So we have three zeros. Now, we don't want to just estimate what they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace this graph. If I go to menu, oops, uh, trace, and do graph trace. I can arrow to get back up. Notice how it even tells me here that this is a zero. And one, so this zero is at negative 1.41 and zero. And if I go to the left again, whoops, I get another zero at negative three zero. And I can move my arrow to the right. And I get to that third uh, zero, which would be at a positive 1.41. Now, if you notice, this doesn't say zero here. Um, I don't know why sometimes a calculator will do that. Um, this is just saying this is negative 3 times 10 to the negative 12th power, which is pretty much 0. So to go back to our notes, we can write down those three zeros. We'll just write them down as coordinates this time. Again, as negative 1.41 and 0. We had the coordinate negative 3, 0, and the coordinate 1.41, 0. So that's it. So that is the end of this video, the end of the notes as well for Lesson 7-1. So hopefully now you have a better understanding after watching this particular video, video of how to find the zeros of a polynomial. Again, it's the same as the x-intercepts. And if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure you watch the previous videos. You have an understanding of the uh, previous uh, items that we've talked about with finding the maximum and minimum values, as well as the first video, which is where we talk about how to find the degree of a polynomial um, and some other important terms here. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.